There's a lot of speculation among boxing fans right now that Conor Ben has been found guilty. And they're basing this on a number of things, such as the fact that he's been dropped from the WBC rankings, the fact that Chris Eubank Jr. is fighting Liam Smith now after weeks of hearing that it was probably going to be Conor Ben, the fact that Conor Ben's team are apparently trying to argue that due to him not currently holding a British Boxing Border Control license, it's beyond UCAD's remit to ban him. There's also the fact that he sent this team of experts onto the media to try and plead his case to the public. If you're about to be declared innocent, why would you feel the need to do that? And also the fact that Matchroom, Frank Smith and Eddie Hearn have admitted that a decision has been made. And whenever they're pressed on what the decision was, they just come out with all this ambiguous babble. Now, if Conor Ben had been found innocent, do you think they just babble whenever they were asked for the verdict? Or do you think they just come straight out and say he's innocent? I think the latter, because an innocent verdict is a very simple thing. There are no I's to dot or T's to cross. But a guilty verdict can be complicated, or should I say the promoters and the team of the fighter can make it complicated because they want to frame the guilty verdict in such a way that it sounds like either he's not guilty or there's some ambiguity about his guilt. Tyson Fury's team did this when he was found guilty of doping in his UCAD case. They tried to make out as though the results were inconclusive. That's what they focused on. Well, you don't get a ban as Tyson Fury did two years back dated if you're found innocent. Could it be a similar situation here with Conor Ben? Are his legal team working around the clock and his PR team, Matchroom and so on, to disguise a guilty verdict? Bear in mind, Conor Ben threatened to, and perhaps attempted to, sue the British Boxing Board of Control. Is he also doing the same with UCAD now? If he is, that may delay a guilty verdict for a long time. Again, going back to the Tyson Fury case, that's what happened with him. He was in a legal battle with UCAD. And it's not until that legal battle came to an end that we finally got the public statement from UCAD and from Fury. If that's what's going on here with Conor Ben, at this stage, it's not so much about trying to get him back in the ring as soon as possible. It's more about PR and trying to salvage his public image. And you can end up doing that at the expense of your career. Sometimes it's better to just bite the bullet and take your ban as soon as possible, because then you'll actually end up back in the ring quicker. When you draw it out like this for the sake of PR, you end up wasting more time and wasting more money. And you actually make your public image worse, not better. Lots of fighters have failed PED tests. Most of them just get their head down and let the lawyers do the talking and the promoters do the talking and they stay away from the spotlight. They don't say anything about the situation until until there's been a public statement made by UCAD or whichever other body. And when you do it that way, the public can soon forget that you actually failed a PED test, or it at least becomes a faded memory. Whereas when you make a big song and dance about it, like Conor Ben has done and Eddie Hearn has done, you just dig yourself a deeper hole. People remember it for longer and they'll hold it over your head for longer. So just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section below.